Hello everyone, Mucklock Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the fourth here, joined today by Chauncey Von Snuffles the third. Mal. And this is a guide on inventory management in Guild Wars 2. This includes bags, banking, material storage, to salvage or not to salvage, identify or not to identify, getting 32 slot bags, do I still need this quest item, and other tips for new players and veterans alike. I'm going to cover a range of inventory tips, some directed toward the new players and some directed toward the veterans and everything in between that I know on this topic. Younglings! When you are starting out, your inventory will look similar to this in size. On the left hand side is where you can put bag type items to increase how much you can carry. At your earliest convenience, once you've gotten a few coins, go to the Black Lion Market, it's like an auction house or a trading post from other games, and buy some bags. Once you have successfully purchased some, you need to visit a market representative to pick them up, equip them, and then celebrate more inventory space. The Sell All Junk button. When you are at a merchant and on the sell screen, you can click sell all junk to get rid of all the items in your inventory that have no value besides vendor coin. These typically are gray colored in text. The cog at the top right of your inventory brings up a few options that are very important. Deposit all materials. Whoever made this button is probably the same angel that made the sell all junk button. This teleports all items in your inventory that are considered materials into your material storage. If you don't know what that is, I will come back to that. It is part of your bank. You are not losing these items. Compact. This squishes all items upward in your bags. If the items are in a special type of bag, they will remain in that bag but move to the top of it. I often click Deposit All Materials Compact when clearing my bags of loot. Hide Rarity. By default, your items have a glowing border such as green, blue, or yellow, allowing you to better recognize what they are at a glance. I do not recommend hiding the rarity. You are essentially giving up easy to see information. Hide new item highlights. If you open a bag for the first time since looting something, that something will sparkle. This turns that off. Again, I do not recommend touching this setting. Let them sparkle. Show bags. This toggles between showing your bag separately or showing your inventory as one huge mega bag. I'm a fan of the mega bag myself. Separate shared bag. If you have shared inventory slots, that's those things here, they come with special offers, promotions, or you can get them on the gem store, you can click the separate shared bag button to toggle them from being part of the mega bag or separate up above. You can sell to the trading post from anywhere. Just right click, sell at trading post. Remember, you almost always want to use the right column to sell to the next person who hits buy instantly instead of the current person who has the highest bid so that you get more money and post the item. You will collect the coin from the sale the next time you visit a black line representative. Bank versus material storage. Your bank is like a bank in most MMOs. It holds items that you can move between your characters or just store them. Your material storage is like a bank, but it has a dedicated slot for every stackable material in the game. By default, 250 of each material. If you hit deposit all materials and you still have some left in your bags, then that means your material storage for that item type is full. At that point, you need to decide, am I going to use these items, sell them, or continue to carry them? Equipment used in a build does not take up bag space. If you have an unused equipment set, you can put pieces of gear there and they will no longer take up bag space. If you have a stack of unidentified gear, make sure that you have enough inventory space at the top left before you click identify all. If you hit 100% bag capacity by accident, it can be a minor pain to clear your bags out. Example, you might salvage one item, receive two components from it, and then your bag overflows. There are pros and cons to identifying items. I prefer to identify than salvage them for two reasons. Items identified sometimes increase in rarity, so identifying a blue can yield a green, or a green could yield a yellow, or a yellow can yield an orange, and sometimes you get a precursor, which is an orange that sells for hundreds of gold. When you salvage items, you often get luck, which increases the magic find of your entire account. Save containers that say affected by magic find on them. Put them in the bank until you have a lot, then increase your magic find through every temporary buff you can, and then open them all at once. Copper Fed Salvage O Matic. If you intend to make one purchase on the gem store, be it with dollars or with gold, the first thing I think you should get is the Copper Fed Salvage O Matic. It is an infinite use, low quality salvage kit. The quality of life improvement this item brings is huge. 
Additionally, if you put it in a shared inventory slot, all of your characters can use it. If you plan to get a second gem store upgrade, I recommend the Storage Expander. Each purchase of this increases the amount of material storage you can hold by 250. Purchasing it a single time doubles the amount of materials you can hold of all types. This is not required, but it feels very nice. If you plan to buy more bag slots for a character of yours, consider instead buying bank slots first. If you decide to change your main character later, you don't get to carry those bag slots you bought over to the new tune, but bank space helps your entire account no matter what character you choose to play. Mystic Salvage Kits A Mystic Salvage Kit is just as good as a Master's Salvage Kit, but it has 250 charges. If you don't have an Infinite Use Salvage Kit, make these to save yourself lots of bag space or errands on getting more Salvage Kits. You can make it with this recipe. The Mystic Forge Stones used in the recipe are gained in a few different ways, but most notably from achievement chests and periodically from daily login rewards. Holding Alt while clicking on an item lets you split the stack. Holding Shift while clicking on an item links the item into chat to show other people. If you type slash wiki, then shift click an item or type the item's name, you can see the wiki page for that item. This is very useful when you cannot remember where you got this quest item and want to know if you can safely delete it. Bigger bags. Something all can appreciate is getting larger bags. Getting up to 18 slot bags is pretty easy. You can buy them from other players, so I won't spend much time talking about that. For 20 slot bags, you can easily buy the Siege Master's Satchel, or Pillager's Sack, just inside the entrance of the World vs. World area, with a very minor amount of World v. World currency plus some gold. On Halloween, you can farm for Halloween pails. On Christmas, you can get the large Winter's Day gift container. And you can buy 20 slaughters from the Fractal Merchant using Fractal Currency. Completing the Bandit Weapon Specialist or Uncanny Canner achievements gives a 20 slot bag as well. I will link the wiki page if you want to see more details on those. And of course, they can be crafted. This means that high level tailors, leather workers, or armor smiths can make 20 slot containers and sell them. So if you have the coin, you can purchase 20 slots on the market. Bigger er bags. 24 slot bags can also be crafted by the same professions listed above. However, from this point on, they are a count pound, which means you gotta make them yourself on one of your characters. Biggerist bags. Still not had enough? Then let's go for the Coupe de Gracie. Coup de Grasse. The Coupe de Gracie, the 32 slot bag. And the easiest 32 slot bag in the game that I know of is the reinforced Olmacan Bandolier. It is the reward for an achievement for helping a child on the sand swept isles. You will need Living World, Season 4, Episode 2, A Bug in the System to have this zone. By doing the list of achievements associated with this chapter, and then you help Ify afterward, you'll be given a 20 slot bag. Then you trade it in with some other items for the achievement, which gives you a 24 slot bag. Again, same thing, you upgrade it to a 28, then again, and it upgrades to a 32. Lastly, you will be then given a recipe for more 32 slot bags using materials gained by doing sand swept aisle meta events instead of the standard materials in tailoring, leatherworking, or armor smithing. A complete walkthrough of this chain would be its own video, so I will instead provide the links to get started on this in the description for those of you who are interested. Once your skill in tailoring, leatherworking, or armor smithing is high enough, again, on any character you on. You can make all the 32 slot bags you want for yourself. However, it does cost some coin, as they each use components that can only be obtained by purchasing those components from a vendor, so there's no lowering the price on those. You're looking at near 100 gold per 32 slot bag, roughly, due to those materials. Remember, anytime you replace an old bag, you can often sell the previous bag on the market. Most of the ones that you would replace are not account bound, so you can sell it to someone else to recoup part of the cost. Special bags. Some bags will automatically collect loot of a certain type. For example, the reinforced Omicron Bandolier automatically grabs containers when I loot them. So bags, boxes, chests, etc. all go to that bag if there is room. The Siege Master's Satchel from World vs. World collects consumables, so food, blueprints, etc. go there first. This isn't anything major, but it is worth mentioning. Lastly, I want to show a simple example of bringing it all together with me cleaning up my bags. I let them get messy on purpose for this video. What? 
don't look at me like that. This was all planned. Okay, so to start off, I'm gonna look at how much space I've got up here, about 75-ish slots. So we cannot identify this whole stack at the same time or we're going to have overflow. I'm going to move some of these up here. Uh, small trick, items that are in the shared account space will not be affected if you hit salvage all. You notice it is not selecting those but if it were down here, it would select those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that up here for a second, and I'm just going to pull out 75 of them and use all. You see we're occasionally getting a yellow item, like I mentioned earlier. And then, Lord have mercy, we're going to salvage all the greens. I use the better salvage kit on the yellows, so that's why I'm not salvaging the yellows with the kit you just saw. And let's pull out half and do that again. And then we'll do it one more time. Salvage again. Oh, there's an orange item. Very nice. And salvage once more. Well, let's put that back up there and take care of that. I didn't mention this earlier, but this is the Runecrafter Salvage Omatic. This is not one of the first things I would recommend you get if you're going to make a gem store purchase, but it's just something I wanted, so I splurged for it. It is basically an infinite use good salvage kit, whereas the Copper Fed is an infinite use low quality one. I usually use this for blues and greens, this for yellows and oranges. Okay, so we have torn apart all of the green items. Now, what do we have in bags down here? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, bags for me automatically go down to the Reinforced Omicron Bandolier. So, got a bunch of presents. I'm going to hang on to those and leave those in present form. We, oh, affected by magic find. That's from doing a meta event in Heart of Thorns. And I am going to put that in my bank. There we go. This one's affected by magic find. We're going to put that in the bank. Where's the other one? There it is. Affected by magic find. So, you see, th this whole row here is affected by magic find. So, someday I'm going to use a whole bunch of boosters, uh, get buffs and stuff like that to get my magic find as high as possible and open them all up. Now, do we have any yellow things? To okay, we can open that. Uh, oh, this is like a cosmetic choice. Okay, I'll do that later. We got a trophy case, open that up. Anything else? Got a bunch of luck here. Uh, bags of gear are most profitable to be opened on lower level characters, uh, specifically level 53, uh, to get the highest money value out of them, so I'm not gonna open those right now. Let's open up my bank. I like to keep my Tomes of Knowledge in here. I've gotten a lot recently from doing Conquest. So I'm going to throw those in the bank. Also going to put these Shards of Glory in there. PvP rewards and World well, World Reward potions. And that leaves us with this. So if I want to salvage all of the yellows, make sure there's no unidentified ones there. Rip those apart. And then we have this orange, Trosis Shortbow. Let's see what that sells for. Uh, almost a gold. So we're definitely going to sell that. If it were less than 20 or 30 silver, I would salvage it because at that point the ectoplasm you get from it is worth more than the orange itself. Now we're going to hit deposit all materials, compact, and we're left with this. Now I tend to keep a stack of luck in the bank because there are occasionally recipes in the game that use luck uh, as well as guild hall upgrades. So I keep this stack here and anything I get above that stack I just launch. So consume all, Consume all. Nice, just leveled up my magic fun. And consume all, and consume all. That's from all of those items that we just got. We now have a few leftover things here. We're going to sell some of the stuff that I know I don't care about on the market. And that's most of it. I still have more to do, but you get the idea. I've been scribbling down everything I could think of pertaining to inventory management for a while now to prepare for this video. I'm sure right after posting it, I'll remember something I wish I had included. So if any of you think of any inventory management tips for players of any experience level, please share them in the comments down below just to spread the word. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please consider clicking the subscribe button to help this charming self-proclaimed yet still humble channel grow. And if you have any questions, I'm on Twitch every night after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and I'm always happy to answer. That's all we've got for today, so until next time, happy cleaning? Mao.